what's going on guys welcome to fresh pineapples i'm sarah i'm zach and we're starting the lifestyle early in life this show is not for children if you're under the age of 18 then fuck off welcome 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 hello everybody welcome to fresh pineapples where we keep it don't say fresh fresh (laughs) all right podcast over it would make so much sense if we ended our podcast with now you guys stay fresh but that was too predictable so we couldn't do that yeah so we just decided to tell you guys to fuck off instead exactly so we have a special episode today which i feel like we've said that multiple times about our episodes but this one's special because because i'm saying fam 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 <laughs> i was wondering when you were gonna do that figured i'd just slide it in right there you know anyways it's special because our guests this week are mike and becca which if you don't know who they are You obviously haven't listened to the other episodes, so fuck you. Go listen to them. Oh my god, it's not that serious. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Mike and Becca are two of our new friends in the lifestyle that we have... Failed at playing with Failed at playing with. (laughs) Yeah, we've gotten pretty close a couple times with them, but it just didn't work out those couple times. and Including at the party we went to. The not mansion party. Yeah. That was the closest. We were right there. And then Sarah passed out. (laughs) And we have them on today. And we're going to be talking about them. How jealousy can be a turn on. Compersion. And FOMO. Why don't you tell the listeners what those things are. Jealousy, compersion, and FOMO. Jealousy. Well, if you don't know what that is, then... You're an idiot. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) I'm being aggressive this episode. I know. Golly. (laughs) Sorry. Jealousy is an emotion that comes from fear and worry that something's going to happen that can be real or fake in your head. There's always a third person. If you're jealous of something about someone... Like, oh, they're rich. That's envy. Jealousy is there's always a third person. Hmm. And then compersion is whenever you feel happy that your partner is happy. So if they're getting pleasured, that makes you feel pleasured. And then FOMO is the fear of missing out. Give us an example of that. So, whenever Sarah and Devin went to the comedy show, I got FOMO because I wanted to go see a fucking comedy show because I love comedy shows, but instead I was just at work like an idiot looking stupid and not at a comedy show. Yeah, and jealousy would have been jealous that he was taking me. FOMO is you just wanted to see the show. Yeah. Yeah, that's the difference. But... Before we get to that, let's tell them how we record these episodes. Let's give them the inside look. The inside scoop? Yes. Well, we're sitting here on our couch right now. I'm shirtless. I'm wearing a big t-shirt, not like other podcasts where the lady will wear lingerie or even be naked. No. We are looking very frumpy, (laughs) very relaxed. We have our mic on a table. We have a big L-shaped sectional couch. And we use all the pillows to help with the sound, so we put them on the back of the couch. That's what Sarah says, but I think that she just likes building forts. No, it helps absorb the sound or something like that. I don't really know how it all works, but... I'm going to build a fort, and it's going to be no girls allowed. How old are you? I'm four. (laughs) but yeah this is where we record pretty makeshift not professional 
Not but, at all. But it gets the job done. It does. I'm sure we'll upgrade in the future and produce a better setting or something. But for now, this is what works. Oh, yeah. We're going to have the whole Joe Rogan set up. Okay, relax. <laughs> so let's give them a vanilla update. Not a fresh update like we do at the end, but a vanilla update about our personal lives. Zach has nothing going on. You just going to work this week. And what am I doing? I don't fucking know. Yes, you do. I'm abandoning you. I know. She's flying home to Texas to go to the bridal shower. Yeah, my sister's. For her sister's wedding, which is going to be in a few weeks, a month. It's July 2nd. And today is Monday, May 16th. So a couple months. Yes. So she's going to be gone a little bit for the next couple months, dealing with all that crud. And it's sad because we're kind of codependent and we're going to be away for six days. You can speak for yourself, all right? Relax. Are you kidding me? You know we are. I just like you for the cuddles. (laughs) I know people joke about being codependent and it's actually not a good thing, but I feel like we kind of are a little bit. So we probably should work on that. I don't yes, think you I are. Who else is going to get your DoorDash for you? I knew you were going to say that. That's, that's <laughs> what you go to. That's like the one thing that you do. That is not the one thing I do. You do my laundry sometimes, but I can do that. Oh, so you don't need me. No, I'm just saying. I prefer not to do it. So, let's get real for a minute. When we started this podcast, it was mainly just for us and something fun to do together. And we didn't think it would have any listeners or anything there would just be like 10 weirdos who would listen to us every week and it'd be like her mom our friends yeah and then one guy who just wants to see sarah's tits that's it but it's actually been a little successful and it's been pretty nice and so originally it was kind of mostly just about us but at this point it feels like It is about us, and I love this hour or two we spend once a week recording together. It's awesome. But everything else, all of the editing and the research and keeping up with the social media and the group and just everything else, it's because of y'all. Like, you listeners are what motivates us at this point. So it is for us, but at the same time. It's for y'all at this point. Is that how you feel? No. You don't feel that way? I mean, I'm very appreciative and I'm very grateful. And I feel like we're very blessed to have listeners from all over the world. And how many listeners that we do have, I feel like we're very lucky to have those listeners. But it's not really about that for me. Like, it's more about us going through a journey and just sharing the experience with people and I think it's therapeutic for us to have this outlet of expression that we use to talk about how we feel and what we're going through and what we've experienced so far and what we're going to continue experiencing I agree okay I agree it is like that for sure This definitely is very therapeutic and stuff. I think I meant more of all the hard parts of it. What motivates me is to do it for them. Yeah. But everything you said, yeah, that is number one. I guess because I don't really do the hard parts. Yeah. So I can't relate. I do everything and Zach just shows up to record. So I just stand here and look pretty. (laughs) You guys are what motivates me to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. He's just a trophy co-host. I'll take it. And lastly, I want to shout out another podcast because I listened to their show and I emailed them saying that I really liked it because that, that's what I do. I let people know when I like their show. Wink, wink. <laughs> just kidding. But after a couple years, they changed their intro to say something like anybody under 18 can fuck off or something and I was like damn it I thought we were the only ones who came up with that so I emailed them saying I love their show 
and please don't think that we stole that from you and everything and he emailed back and was super nice about it and they ended up giving us a shout out on their show because they started listening to it so of course we're going to return the favor so go listen to midwest menage de trois and that's about all all right now that we got all that bullshit out of the way it's not all bullshit all right fair enough just semi-bullshit all right let's get to it Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a very, very, very special treat. We have our good pals, our good new pals, Mike and Becca on the podcast. Mike and Becca, say hello. What up? How's it going? Becca's in the house. (laughs) So how about y'all tell us about your relationship and how you decided to become swingers? Damn, already getting to the deep questions. <laughs> Is that too deep? Oh, God, I mean. I, we I, like it deep. <laughs> there we go. Um, well, I don't know. Do you want to you wanna start with that? Yeah, just about us, I guess. I can just go in. Uh, we've been married for 12 years. And kind of just started off with uh, a lot of it was just talk, fantasy talk in the bedroom. Talking about, you know, while having sex, just being with other people was kind of a turn on. And then uh, we just kind of always kept things as like fantasies are meant to be fantasies. And I think, uh, I think we were driving or something. We're like, what if fantasies aren't meant to be fantasies? Let's make them realities kind of thing. And I was kind of started the talk of it, I guess, more or less. I think another big part of it too is that I'd never been with a woman sexually. I've kissed a woman, but I was yearning for that experience. And I'd always, like since I was little, felt like I was attracted to women too. So I think when I brought that up to him, I was like, I'd like to explore because a lot of that has to do with that. It was really hard to bring up because you don't want to hurt your significant other and make them feel like you don't want to be with them yeah. or that you want to find somebody else. But I was like, 50% of marriages end in divorce in the United States, statistically speaking. A lot of people we know have been divorced and remarried. And I mean, one of the biggest things I think is somebody always cheats and I just thought, well, let's take the cheating out of the scenario and let's liven up our sex what life again. Fuck people together. Yeah. I thought, what a beautiful <laughs> thing. Like, I don't have to hide anything. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got into it. I like that. I like that you guys are just like driving randomly one day and you're like, <laughs> were you going to be swingers or what's going on here? <laughs> and then the other guy's like, yeah, let's just do it. I think we were actually heading camping. How? I mean, like, and I didn't even know, like, how do you even, I was like, well, how do we start? Do we just tell people, like, hey, you know? (laughs) You, me, me, you, us? Yeah, but I think we Googled it. I think we we Googled it. Yeah, we did a lot. We did do some research. We we Googled, and then we started listening to, I think we actually did listen to a couple podcasts. And then we also just read stories and informational things on just communication and that's when we learned about like boundaries and things like that and yeah yeah. well before we go any further we have some important questions to ask so how did y'all feel whenever we told you that we had a podcast and we told y'all before we had even met so what did you think about it that you were going to be talked about and everything uh you want my like honest honest answer yeah (laughs) absolutely uh I didn't expect it to be what it is I guess it's kind of hard to explain I kind of thought oh yeah right like they don't really have a legit podcast (laughs) yeah that's what I figured too yeah I guess that's the kind of negative thinking but um I think when did we listen to the 
first episode after we met you guys yeah it was, it was right um, we, and i think that was good i think that was very good because after we met we got a taste of your guys' personality and so we could kind of put two and two together yeah i'm glad you didn't listen till after because then it almost puts up expectations of who we are yes definitely yeah all right honest answer what did you guys think of us whenever we first met and then how did that change into what you think now i like you better now <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, it's a it's an amazing thing how like a personality can actually change the way that you look at someone. And so just seeing you guys for the first time, I honestly thought that Sarah was way better looking than Zach. So like you know when you meet a Accurate. couple, I think even even people who aren't in the lifestyle they maybe it's just us but we would always like see couples and we would make note that one or the other is better looking than the other or that they match and so I don't know do you guys think we match or do you think I was just thinking that I feel like y'all match I think y'all match yeah yeah okay because you guys are both butt ugly so (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding No, y'all are both like good looking people, you know what I mean? But we're more than aware that she's definitely the the breadwinner as far as looks goes. No, not that by far. Are you kidding me? It's not like it's not like out of this because to be honest, it's pretty level. Like it's pretty comparable. And Mm. I thought you guys dressed nice for the occasion because we've been on dates with couples before that didn't really put a lot of energy or it didn't appear to us that they didn't put a lot of time and energy into their appearance in, at all. into their appearance yeah. at all like yeah um yeah so back to the question sorry what did you what did you think um first impressions I thought Sarah's uh really attractive I was glad they didn't lie about their age so that was nice I guess we... how's it changed now um I think it's uh, a lot better just as uh knowing you guys' personalities a lot for both of you I and felt pretty I actually I felt, felt really feel comfortable. comfortable I felt yeah. really comfortable like I when we went to your house I felt actually really comfortable with you guys I just didn't know what you guys were interested in or thinking because um I know in the, your past podcast you've said that you guys suck at flirting and we <laughs> you in fact agree with that wholeheartedly <laughs> mm, yes <laughs> Us as a duo are not good at flirting. Like, <laughs> like, well, she's not good at flirting individually. I'm pretty good at flirting in- individually, but whenever she's with me, and then whenever like, there's, I don't know. It's just uh, there's yeah, no different dynamics. So. I, I no, I, I can understand that. Just the comfortability of uh, is is he okay with it? Is she gonna be okay with it? Are we all okay with it? Yeah. Also- like when when is when is the good time? When is the good time to? step the flirting game up a little bit or you know to really Mm. play it on also in front of your significant other it's it's not like even though you've already talked about it that you know it's going to be okay i too do like i will flirt hardcore when adam's gone all right we have one last question before we get on topic how disappointed were you when we didn't play the night of the party uh (laughs) <laughs> I was actually, I was actually throwing a tantrum because I had, you know, I had stuff to drink. And so I was like pouting at the hotel. I was like, <laughs> we didn't get the play. <laughs> <laughs> play. But when I woke up, I was like, it's, it's all good. You know, like just, I guess more so it was, um, I mean, we just, we figured that things happen or whatever. I was a little worried about if I went too far flogging you. And so I was really concerned that I upset you or hurt you and you didn't really say anything <clears throat> that night. I had some insecurities about that, but we totally get that things just don't work out. And yeah, I'd much, I'd much rather not play than try to force a play or try just like an expectation. That's why 
whenever we go and we meet somebody or hang out with anybody, we don't have any expectations of any kind of uh, play or anything. It's just whatever happens naturally ha- nat- happens naturally. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Even though I was pouting because I was disappointed. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I was, I was disappointed. Yeah. But when you're having that good connection, you're vibing all night and you're having so much fun and you're like then really into the, you're you're on your flirting game you know then you're then you do have a little bit expectations like I think that's when when we ask you guys like you guys want to go back to the hotel and you guys said yes at first I was like yeah (laughs) so that sounds so creepy you know no yeah we we were hoping that in the podcast when we explained everything that y'all would get it not that we yeah. just like changed our mind or anything or yeah no definitely uh once we listen to that podcast we definitely understood and uh, it totally made sense and yeah completely understand and like adam said too i i do just like a no, nothing that's like well it's nine o'clock time to yeah time to go fuck you know it's more like it's i like natural. it to be sexy and natural you know definitely organic connection like that Mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah i mean we were pretty disappointed too if it makes you guys feel any better like we both wanted to do stuff it just like just one of those things just didn't really work out you know yeah mm-hmm. okay we'll stop asking y'all uncomfortable questions <laughs> so mike how big is your dick no i'm just kidding <laughs> um well <clears throat> we call it the awc the awc Average white cock. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. I haven't heard that either. I like that. <laughs> There's got to be a place for AWC when BBC is so popular, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so during y'all's first experience, how did you deal with jealousy? Well, we prepared for that in our communication, like, okay, well, once we, once we go here, we can't go back. So let's make sure we, you know, cross our teeth, dot our eyes. And I think imagining it really does help. So I just imagined Mike with somebody else. And I thought I, in my head, I was like, that's, that's hot. But I actually didn't get jealous then during our play with the the first time we ever swing um I got jealous about something afterwards and so I had to work on that and basically the play went good except for the guy um, out of the couple he couldn't get hard and that happens a lot it doesn't matter how young or old you are I know it's happened to me more than three times my instant reaction is like I get frustrated because there's nothing you can do to make it work and you automatically as a female just think it's you think it's you you're like I'm Mm -hmm. ugly I'm not (laughs) sexy enough (laughs) but then I have to remember there's a lot of pressure and you're you're having sex and you have two other people there you're like this is a lot it's sexy it's hot there's a lot going on it's a lot so but anyways play went well and we were we were extremely happy with how it went down no one got jealous I thought it was super hot I was turned on by the whole thing we soon realized after we played with them that our sex was like amazing between Mike and I it was like oh it was great we wanted to we just wanted to keep doing it and we don't I mean after being married for 12 years together 13 years and two kids you don't I don't know the whole like three times a day was in the very beginning when we started dating so that just doesn't we went out the window yeah so after our play with them we were like so what we just wanted to tear each other's clothes off and I was like this is what I'm talking about this is exactly what I wanted for our relationship for our sex life for you know the intimacy to be more than what it had been it just was very stale and that just comes with life and comes with routine and being with the same person every day and yeah but then Mike was explaining our play to somebody else. I think he was very excited. I was excited too. Like we wanted to share this experience with somebody like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. 
You guys like, should all try so it out. Fun. Like we had so much fun. It was just great. So you just trying to, I want to just explain it to like your friend or like your best friend. So you're just like, oh, dude, you got to try this. Like, <laughs> yeah, and that's what Mike was doing. And I heard that he said that the female that we played with was uh, a lot better at writing him than I was. And I was really hurt by that and jealous and everything that we were, we had like prepared for um, communication and mentally, uh, I was kind of like, well, that kind of tarnished it just because that was a reality that I didn't ever, we didn't cover. I didn't expect to have someone, I don't know, like be different in the bedroom and that he liked it more so. What, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think this came down to that. was taken out of context when it was said, but understandably so. But I think uh, it's just different. It's um, your play is going to be different with a different partner. So the one, the person you're with, I think like, uh, I didn't really have much to be jealous of because, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was disappointing for, I mean, yeah, it was disappointing for you because you didn't really get much play in. What about, you know, what about seeing me like suck his dick? No, I, cause I was, I encouraged that. So yeah, I thought that was pretty hot, but I, I didn't, we didn't get jealous. I didn't get jealous that time. There has been times where I've been jealous, but. It wasn't that time. Okay, so list the times when you've been jealous because that's just not something, jealousy comes from fear. And when you're engaging in something like this in a lifestyle, when you go from the same person and being committed and monogamous, and then you decide to explore this side of consensual non-monogamy, there's still going to be fears that are I don't know, taken in a negative context when in fact you have to feel, understand, and self-reflect that you're feeling that way about a certain situation or something that your significant other did or or whatever the situation was, you need to reflect on that and then you need to positively speak to yourself about it. Um and I think that's where you can fight with that negative jealousy feeling yes does that make sense yeah you know the time i've gotten jealous is when uh it was another time and me and the female were done playing and whitney was not done playing and i was like "Ooh, no no we're done <laughs> <laughs> like i was fully clothed and ready to like you guys can have a nice night out see ya get out of our hotel room now and she was like, no. I was still so, naked and playing yeah. with him. So even that, after the, even after we had sex, I don't know. I was really into him. Yeah, so yeah, I mean. <laughs> that was probably like one of the main times. But I, but I run, yeah. I, I got jealous in, but I think I just used it in a way of growing. Through some growing pans. I didn't deal with it good that night. I kind of left the room to go get some ice. And I closed the door rather hard. So she knew I was upset. And it stopped their play. But then uh, then we just talked about it, communicated. Again, just that's the, the number one key is just communicating. Yeah, like he was like, this made me feel, made me feel bad. I didn't like this. So it was our second time ever playing with somebody. So, I mean, we're still learning some boundaries and within each other. So yeah. just dealing with it that way. Hmm. So you told us that you use jealousy as a turn on. Can you explain that? Um, I like to use, I'll use it like uh, after play. So it's more like I'm going to fuck her really hard and reclaim her as mine. So I, that's kind of like my, I guess that's how I would use, that's how I like to use it afterwards. If I do get jealous. Yeah, so I think that that has been, that's just now grown into how we experience the lifestyle as a couple together is that even if we were not like upset about anything in particular about how a situation went down during play with another couple, we still will leave and 
look at each other differently. But yeah, I think like he, after we play with a couple or even go to a party and we are feeling the vibe and like the sexual energy that a party will have, our lifestyle party will have. And I know that he's flirted with other women and other women have flirted with him. The next day I look at him like, damn, he's my man. He's sexy. I like that, you know? So I think it re-energizes our sexual appetite for each other. Definitely puts that spark. I don't know that yeah. sexual spark. It lights a spark because there is no reason to be upset or feel insecure about somebody else hitting on Mike because I know that we're going to be together and stay together. He's not going to leave me for somebody else. And so that's another component to turning jealousy into a turn on into a positive thing. Do you think anyone could train themselves to use jealousy as a turn on or do you think it depends on the person? I think it definitely Depends on the person and their personality. And I say that because we have some non-lifestyle friends and uh, they have asked us questions about the lifestyle and we we try to help them out and, you know, we give them pointers and tips and tell them how to communicate and all the things that's worked well for us. But they are both very jealous of each other. And they get jealous if people talk to them just randomly. And I think it just goes into the personality of the person. I think it can be both as far as depending on the person and someone who was once a very jealous person in their past relationships can work really hard at what you call compersion and turning jealousy into a positive thing versus a negative thing. And I don't think that Mike and I were mature enough in our relationship to be able to utilize compersion in a consensual non-monogamous situation until now. And I think it took security in our relationship and longevity for it to be able to to be a positive new exciting adventure for us but there's some people I think that there's a lot of components that goes into being able to turn jealousy into a positive thing and that's age maturity Um, it took a lot of emotional growth for me because I used to say I'll never do that. That's disgusting. I used to say that about people we heard about swinging. And I look at that now and I think that was very immature Becca who didn't really have a lot of life experiences to be able to explore this side of our sexual experience, I guess. I don't know if you want to call it that. Yeah. Like, I think it's very interesting that both of you guys you like use it are able to use it as a turn on because Sarah's definitely able to use it as a turn on but I'm not like I I don't really like I don't get jealous but at the same time I don't get turned on whenever she is with another guy or you know I guess I've never been in the same room as her like doing it doing stuff with another guy so you I have don't, he was fingering her and I look over yeah. and you're like this. Wait, what? <laughs> How did I look? Wait, do that again. No, I mean, I look over, I was looking, it's fun. I think that's another thing is you look at people's face or reaction. And I wanted to see how you were reacting to Mike fingering Sarah. And mm. you're like, really (laughs) like you were listening to the news i was just like yeah when you say when you say that you don't get jealous but you also (laughs) don't find pleasure in it i could definitely see that (laughs) yeah i guess i zach just has no emotions and he feels nothing so that's not true i mean you obviously do 
like I have dwindled emotions I would say like comparatively suppressed but, emotions well I well I don't have suppressed jealousy or anything like that it's more like it's just it's just like whatever for me like whenever we were playing with that one couple that they know um Joffrey yeah Joffrey yeah and his wife and his wife yeah and I like looked up from eating her out and saw you like sucking his dick I was just like and I've already said this in the, in a previous episode but it was just like nothing to me like it I wasn't jealousy that. but it wasn't me getting turned on or anything like that so that's something that I'm interested in myself to see if I can like have growth in that subject and maybe it become a turn on for me because I don't know if I'm just not there yet or if that's just who I am as a person you know yeah well it's not just being a turn on either it can be because compersion is technically it makes you happy to see your partner like happy basically like them getting pleasured makes you happy not necessarily doesn't have to be a turn on so it doesn't make you happy either that I'm I think it makes me happy yeah I would say it makes me happy I mean if it didn't make me happy if it made me anything other than happy I feel like we wouldn't do it right like you know that's true that's true and maybe that's maybe it's as simple as that yeah because when Sarah's happy you're happy right and so that night that things didn't work out and where we weren't able to play even though you were bummed you were more concerned about Sarah and she just she wasn't feeling like playing and so you were happier making sure she was okay so I think it goes in the same realm of like if Sarah was liking being fingered by Mike you were like yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's true I'm more like y'all where I see it as a turn on and I said this in one of the episodes but um because we had an open relationship before we started swinging. And when Zach went to go see this girl, I felt jealous and I didn't like that. And so somehow over like a month or so, I like trained myself into thinking it was hot. So now I just think it's hot when he's with another girl, even if I'm not there. So I like trained myself to think that way. So I definitely have compersion in general. I don't think I even needed to train myself that, but I did train myself into thinking him with another girl is a turn on that's my experience with it same because it was a newer way of thinking for me that I had to actively practice and it's not like you're lying to yourself it's Mm -hmm. it's more like like anything if you're going on a diet you want to eat healthier so you have to have a positive self-talk like it's very similar when I set him up on a date with a woman without me and and we've talked about like our situation and we are a same room kind of couple we've never had it completely open like you guys started off but there was a part of me that wanted to like try it a little bit I don't know I didn't know what to expect so I set up a date for him and had him meet this woman and we were honest about our situation when we told her like we're in a we're in a marriage that's not open but we're like we're trying this out and so she met with him at the at the place and while they were there I was like okay this is cool like I set it up so I was I had a part in it and then two hours went by and I had to it was really crazy I kind of got crazy I kind of like it just not it just naturally happened I didn't mean to or intend to because I I set this up for him And when he wasn't texting or calling for the first hour, I was like, it's cool. They're busy, like on the date, you know, they're don't, don't be weird. Don't be annoying, distract yourself. So I had to go do something and distract myself. And then by like, like hour two, I was like getting, I started getting irritated and annoyed. And I was like, well, why, why the fuck isn't he texting me back? What the, it's something so is it special? Are they fucking somewhere? Like I just started, I started <laughs> imagining, I started to like this, this talk just was just happening. It was just, that was like fear and irritation out of nowhere. And I finally, like, I had to like talk myself down. I'd be like, it's fine. They're not off somewhere fucking. He's going to text me. He's going to call me. You know, like I had to be like, 
this is fun. This is great. I love it. And, and so I think it was, um, it's a, how do you say for me, when I set him up on that date, it was a really good practice to yeah. see how I would actually, practice. yeah, it was a safe practice for sure. <clears throat> Turns out they were only at lunch for an hour and he went back to work. So that, yeah, that Carla other hour, this motherfucker back. was at work the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just had to go back to work. I was like, well, how was the date? And he was like, it was fine. It wasn't anything spectacular. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. This whole time I'm like imagining all these things and these little, yeah. Like you said, you kind of had to like practice and tell yourself now I really would not, I would do it again. I would set him up on a, a date again. I think just, I think jealousy comes from insecurity. So I think like with maturity of a relationship, mm -hmm. you, you become more secure in that relationship. So your jealousy is going to change into a more of a positive thing. And you'll understand how to turn it into a positive thing because you're more secure with yourself and your relationship. I, I think it goes even deeper than what we're even saying. I think it depends on if a person is capable of major growth. Yeah. I don't that's... think everybody is capable of major growth. I think some people are really just stuck in their ways. And I know that sounds kind of sad and kind of jaded to think, but I think that we know of like one specific example that just that person's just never going to change. But I mean, at the end of the day, like if you're capable of growth in your life and like major growth and you want to change and you want to make the change, you can have that kind of experience with anything, Let like especially jealousy, you know, anyone can really. I think, I think you're right. Anybody who's capable of changing is capable of training themselves yeah some people just aren't yeah, yeah definitely. I, I agree I, with that I can yeah. Agree with that. yeah for sure yeah yeah that's a better way to put it next another type of jealousy is FOMO which is the fear of missing out how would you describe FOMO in a lifestyle like how would someone come across that yeah I think I think I I think I, he has I, that. I've actually, I, I actually, ha I can speak on that because I think I, I've had that because we've actually had a, uh, a girlfriend for a couple of months, mm -hmm. and I wasn't jealous of her per se, but like when I knew they were like doing things, I was jealous of more like the fear of missing out of some hot action. Yeah, or Jealousy. he wanted to experience like just, just even some simple him, things. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely that is something. I guess we've never really, I really thought of that. We way. never talked about it, but it's definitely can be a negative thing if you let it. Yeah, the only time that I've experienced it so far is Zach was hanging out with two girls and he came home. And he said that they had a threesome, which turns out he was joking. But when he said it, I instantly <laughs> felt oh, like jealousy in the form of FOMO. Not like, oh, you're with two other girls, but like, where was I? Like, <laughs> why can't, why wasn't I part of it? Like, I wanted to join. So it's not jealous of him. It's more of like jealous of the situation almost. Yeah. Like I wanted to be there. Yeah. That's the only time think. I felt it. Oh, yeah. I I agree. When you explain it that way, like I said, I definitely have experienced that when we had our girlfriend. Um, I, okay, another situation that I got really jealous about and had nothing to do with Mike was we have a couple lifestyle friends and they were able to, I don't know what we were doing, but they were able to all go to our one couple's or our one friend's house. And they were telling us about the amazing orgy that they had <laughs> and that they had a whole ass train going on. And I was 
actually really bitter and jealous that um, we weren't able to go. What were we doing? Do you know? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Yeah, that's FOMO. Yeah. It's and it's not. It's not very. I don't like that feeling because I feel like I'm being childish, like or that it's that insecurity where you're like, I don't know, do, do better, Becca. That's all I have to tell myself, do better. (laughs) (laughs) Cause there's always going to be, there's always more, there are opportunities in the future. So it's what you kind of have to like positive self-talk. And that's kind of similar to, um, when we didn't get to play, there's going to be other opportunities. I'm sure that we can hang out again. And that, what about you guys for, for the, as far as the night of the mansion party, uh, did you guys have FOMO at all? Or were you guys just feeling like. I had major FOMO. I'm going to be honest with you. I had FOMO literally 35 seconds ago whenever y'all said that y'all had a girlfriend for the past couple months or whatever i didn't tell y'all you know? <laughs> no, i didn't know that yeah. i want a fucking girlfriend like i want us to have someone that we can just like she's just like our sex slave oh yeah, i said that probably, too like, i said she lives in our spare room and she's a sex see, slave. see i don't want a bitch <laughs> living with not us. Her, man. We, we've tried we looked around her hard to find honey. yeah no, no, i'm yeah, sure I-, I definitely felt fun at the party though how that lady with the with the dreads oh my gosh i don't know what, why you what, know what i'm talking what about oh yeah, yeah. She, she had a smoking she body she was beautiful and he had a smoking and, body yeah and he was more like ozzy osbourne meets like a viking yeah <laughs> yeah but i, I and, was kind of into it too though like, like i, was I mean i'm not attracted then. to men but i was like dude this guy's fucking i was like i get it like yeah. All right. Like, good for you guys. I bet you he just like goes to pound town. Like, oh my can, god, yeah. I mean, he had one dick that turns into Medusa. He like that's what I can <laughs> turn, that, turn that pussy into stone. You yeah, know? that's what I imagine, man. He's just like, yeah, I dominate bitches. I don't know. Like, that's <laughs> that, guy's, that guy's packing heat. You know, he's packing heat. <laughs> yeah, but that was the only like. It's not even like that serious, or whatever. But I just get. I, that's kind of a personal thing. I get that way sometimes because I'm I'm so like shallow and very sexually minded. And so when I see someone, it's like, God, I just want to fucking tear into them. Like, oh, my God. And so seeing someone like that, she, she has a very unique look. You know what I mean? And I'm like into that. Like I'm into unique looks and tattoos and things of that nature. And Red hair. Red hair for sure. One thing about being at the party and being in the lifestyle in general that I've thought a lot about is that self-confidence got to be number one, I think, because you have a lot of different, per, like different um, spectrums of people and relationships or their relationships. And you have all these different spectrums of looks and types and personalities and you're all mixing and I will say that party was big it was huge so Mm -hmm. it was it felt like was quite a few people it felt a little overwhelming and even for someone like me I'm very social and I really I don't I'm not I can walk up to anybody if I'm determined enough and say hey what's up I'm digging you and that's I actually did do that to a couple and I didn't get the response that I thought I was going to get. So, of course, that kind of made me feel a little insecure and a little less likely to do that again. So <laughs> that's one thing that you also have to do a lot of like self-talking and be like, you're good looking. You got this. <laughs> you're, um, you know, like you could have any couple in this party you want, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. That's like kind of. I like thought about that at the party. I was like, why don't I just like go up to them and like start a conversation or whatever. But my self-confidence wasn't at an all-time high considering I just got hands on like a few days prior. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, hey, let me, <laughs> let me, let me add that from my perspective this time, and you guys can all hear it, that 
Zach did an amazing job at the second kiss. Okay. <laughs> Definitely a lot more spark, a lot more energy. He brought, he brought his game to that one. I was very impressed. You yeah. know what I really liked too? I liked the hand on the neck. That was, that was a tough, good, good little insert there. Yeah. I didn't like, that's like a, I don't normally do that. You know what I mean? Like she likes to be choked, but like not every woman likes to be choked. You know what I mean? But like, I don't know. I was just kind of like. I think you were a little mad. You were like, listen, bitch, I'm going to like this. I'm going to fuck shit up right now. (laughs) Oh my gosh. No, no, no. I don't know. I just was, it just felt right. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I really liked about the party too is the pool the pool vibes kind of helped I think if more people got in the pool oh yeah even you guys would have been a little more social yeah yeah I think I would have been more social in the pool yeah I agree I, I wish more people would have went in that would have been that would have been nice but I'm not sure. I felt a little weird like getting up and watching the two women eat each other out in the hot tub like I felt I felt like one of the dudes like I hear I was like crossing my arms I was like yeah get it yeah but, like I like I thought the same thing when I listened to the um what you were saying Sarah is that you kind of wanted to get in yeah you're all like because you're like hey I'm ready to get in and then you're like okay that's cool watching this too and then you're like I don't know a lot was going through my head <laughs> I was like is this is this is this weird (laughs) (laughs) yeah um so do you guys think that if you decided to play separately you would feel more jealousy or FOMO what in your definition what is jealousy let me just ask that question well I have the actual definition jealousy is a complex emotion that encompasses feelings ranging from suspicion to rage to fear to humiliation it most typically occurs when a person perceives a threat to a valued relationship from a third party the threat may be real or imagined okay actually you just made me made me think i think fomo falls more under the line of envy because i looked it up and it says the jealousy and envy are similar but Jealousy always involves a third party that is seen as a rival for affection or attention. And envy occurs between only two people and is best summed up as, I want what you have. Okay. So jealousy is of the other person. There's another person involved. Envy is more of the FOMO. What was the question? (laughs) Um, If you played separately, do you think you'd feel more jealous or feel more FOMO? I think it'd be more FOMO for sure. I feel secure enough to know that there would not be a threat to our relationship. That's why I say FOMO because I, I don't I don't feel like there's you you threat. really you really don't. No, I, there's no threat. I don't, if I were, I think I've I think I've grown that over the last um little bit. Not not to feel threatened by somebody else. Okay. Feel pretty secure that way it's more about the fear of missing out yeah um, that's for sure you know, I, think. I agree definitely envy for envy over jealousy for sure that would be my answer as well yeah i think any situation would be fomo for me like for us i don't get jealous of the other girl really anymore yeah yeah I was gonna say so sex is really an intimate intimate thing especially with two people and I I have always wondered that with people who do engage in open relationships and you know one's at home with the kids while the other is you know having sex with another person and they're sharing that together and just them, I, I always do wonder how that affects the relationship. Does, is there a disconnect or when that person comes home after their date and being intimate, um, is there a reclaim going on and it makes everything better or makes the, those people feel better? And you guys could answer that better than um, we can, obviously. 
we just separate sex from love so much, I think, to the point where it would be the same as if I went with a guy to get a cup of coffee who's a friend. Like, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, really? it's so separate for us that it's more of just an activity. Um, and as far as reclaiming, I don't think we've ever had reclaiming sex I think the next time that we do end up having sex like not right after when we get home but the next time we do have sex it is a lot hotter and stuff I think it is for you like whenever I was done with that the girl the first one in our relationship you were like all of you were all over me whenever I every time I would come home from hanging out with her made me more attracted to you yeah but like so for example whenever you went and played with Devin Devin yeah whenever you went and played with Devin I mean well to be fair that was a different situation there was a, there was a little bit extra involved there but Why? I didn't feel what was extra the whole the whole condom thing okay yeah yeah, yeah. um so there was no reclaiming sex then but I don't think I would feel that way. Like, what about the guy in the cruise ship? I mean, if you recall, I wasn't like <laughs> all over you afterwards or anything like that. Well, I'm asking for them, not for me. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. But yeah, no, I don't. I just don't think that reclaiming is like what turns me on or anything like that, I guess. Yeah, it does make me more attracted to you. Like, it brings back into perspective how much I love you and how much I love us that when I do go outside of our relationship and come back that's why it's more special or even if you leave and come back you know you say that but I feel like that's only because the people that you've been with since we've been together hasn't been as good as me and so one day you're going to be with someone like if not as good as me like maybe even better than me (laughs) and you're going to be like who the fuck is this that guy, dude? Fuck this guy. I don't give a fuck about him. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm just saying. You got to be careful. I will say I have never myself been with a couple and afterwards thought, like, thought about them all day and the next day or whatever. I've always been, I've always thought Mike is like my home. Like, he's my mm-hmm. comfort. And so, I, it was fun what like while it lasted with that couple or the, the person I was being intimate with but I've been so appreciative of him much more like similar to what you said is and I think it's that after sexy play that you're like wanting to tear your couple's clothes off it just re-energizes my appreciation and love and attraction to him yeah, it's because they're just not as good as me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Zach answer. I know. <laughs> that was funny. You're, you're wearing off on him. Do you think you will always be swingers or stop at some point in your life? Yeah, I know. I think we'll be uh, using our cane and our walker to get into them lifestyle parties. <laughs> we'll be at parties going, you want to see my kitties? And they're like, <laughs> what? Yeah, my kitties. I brought my kitties to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly a true story that happened. I, I think, think we I think we told them, didn't we? Yeah, tell you, you, did, yeah. you did. Yeah. I was like, I want to be that bitch. Like 80 years old, bringing my cats to the hotel because I'm too afraid to leave them alone at home. And we're you know, walking in with our fucking canes and we're dancing. And I was just so, I was like, you know what? Rock on. Cause age ain't nothing but a number. You can decide mm-hmm. to act old and, you know, at, in your thirties and your forties, I've met people who are just, that's their life. They, they just don't live. I don't know. And that's my definition of living is getting out there, experiencing, having a little discomfort because that's the only way you're going to grow. And we talk a lot about emotional growth. I I think a lot of the lifestyle has to do with trial and error. Even you can talk about it till you're blue in the face, but until you actually get out there and experience and partake, you're not actually going to 
learn a damn thing. And I've learned so much more about myself and my relationship since being in the lifestyle that I don't want that to stop. Yeah, and it's always always something new that you're learning. I'm not going to lie. Like this last party we went to with the, you know, the pool and the mansion thing. I was listening when I listened to your podcast and I heard you say it was just even though you had, you know, some social anxiety going on, we all deal with that, like our little insecurities that we have to get past or like that awkward moment where you're like, hi, you know, like first meeting someone, you, you don't know what to say or what to do or, you know, how to act. But out of all of that, like, despite all of that crap, um, I felt like myself and the whole week, actually, the whole week afterwards, I was thinking that it was just so fun. And Mike and I are experiencing something that a lot of couples I wish would too. Like, I think they're, you know, people are missing out and that's my perception. I agree with your perception. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard for vanilla people to understand that their life could be so much better. Well, I mean, sure. But I, I think that there's like a personal journey that you go on with the whole, like being in the lifestyle and hearing y'all's personal journey and how y'all both have grown just from being in the lifestyle and going through experiences and going through the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's like a good testament to that and how it's not just about sex. You know, it's about finding yourself and discovering your own sexuality and what really makes you tick and what pleasure really means to you and how that yeah. applies to your day-to-day -day life really so I think that's really cool well are there any other questions you have for us or anything else you want to say um I think like what's fun about also being in the lifestyle is you get to learn and see other people's relationship dynamics and you never, like, you never really know that there's all these different spectrums of, like, relationships and how, I don't know, how people work and make their relationships work. And you guys are probably the youngest couple that, in, that we've met in the lifestyle so far. There's very, there's very few. Very and I few. say that because I believe that it takes a lot of maturity and wisdom to join the lifestyle. To join the lifestyle because you know, it's, you have to understand the importance of what you want for your relationship and communicate enough to know that it's going to work. And so I just really thought you, when I was at your age, there, there was no way I was going to be ready for the lifestyle. So I think it's really cool that you guys um, started out with saying, we're going to be in an open, I'm, I'm interested in an open relationship and that you guys did fall in love but still continue to be in the lifestyle. And I know that you guys don't have a lot of swinger experience yet. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot more growth for you guys. And I'm excited to hear that journey. Mm, thank you. Do you think I flirted with you at the party a little more than the first time we met? I have no idea. I can't recollect any flirting going on at all. I was not picking up or putting down anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe your social anxiety did put up a little bit of a wall because I felt like I was a lot more flirty but um did you want us to read both of the forms from both of y'all the starting the lifestyle and the lifestyle experience ones we we have not shared our answers with each other she told us not to oh okay cool that way it's like hearing it for the first time you're I don't even remember what I put, put on there, so it, it's definitely going to be hearing it for the first time. So I'll read Becca's answers, and you'll read Mike's. So <laughs> we'll do the starting the lifestyle form first. So for Becca, what was your biggest worry or hesitation? She put, I was worried that people were going to be rapey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, we shouldn't laugh at that. How did you? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's an understandable worry. Though. Yeah. How did you learn about the lifestyle? I googled swingers. Makes sense. Did you create rules and boundaries or dive right in? 
We did talk a lot about boundaries and the what ifs, but we also just dove right in because we knew we wouldn't have a real basis without experiences. That makes sense. I'm gonna learn as you go. Was your first experience good or bad? Good and bad at the same time. I'm an idiot and decided to go tanning longer than I should have and was so crispy. On top of that, I bought new lingerie that was the same color as my skin. The couple we swung with were also virgin swingers. We talked for two weeks before we actually met, so it felt very comfortable. The female was dreamy, beautiful, long brown hair, beautiful body. The man was meh, okay looking, not horrible. Anyways, the female and I went into the bathroom and helped each other dress into our lingerie. Then we walked out to the guys drinking it and listening to music. Then we just started to naturally play together. The only downfall, and literally downfall, was that the guy couldn't get hard, so I was sitting over there awkwardly while Mike was having a lot of newfound fun. I didn't realize I put a whole fucking book. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. It's all right. That's understandable. Okay, so Mike's form. What was your biggest worry or hesitation? Jealousy and how the other males would be. How the other males would be in what way? Uh, just I, I think just flirting with their wife, being with their, their significant other, how what their reaction is going to be. You mean like you were worried that if you flirted with their wives or, or something that the guys, you were concerned that they would be mad or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind oh. of the reaction if they were okay with it too. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I definitely feel that. I understand. How did you learn about the lifestyle? We talked about it during sex. And then one day as we were driving, she brought it up about actually really trying the lifestyle. Yeah, we mentioned that one earlier. Did you create rules slash boundaries or dive right in? Yes. I like the answer. <laughs> so that had- definitely Mike's answers. <laughs> I like that. That's some shit that I would say. He said we had rules and boundaries and we dove right in listen to different podcasts and read articles about the lifestyle i think that's smart get a good basis but then just gotta dive right in you know was your first experience good or bad tell your story it was good we we met a couple for dinner and drinks went to a bar played darts talked and hung out then we all started to flirt with each other at the bar and decided to take it back to our hotel room now before meeting this couple we have talked over snapchat for a good while to get to know them more Play for us usually starts with the girls start to play when the girls start to play and the guys jerk each other off. <laughs> <laughs> and they put, haha, JK, JK. No, but for real. <laughs> watch the girls play and watch them enjoy each other. <laughs> then when they ask for the men to join, we go in. Now I feel bad for my wife as the other male was having a bit of a struggle to get hard. Now, as a man in the in the lifestyle, I fear they I feel there is a lot of pressure on you to perform, and then on top of that, you're naked with another guy in the room. Other than that, it was really good. And the next week, oh my god, my dick was sore from fucking some of the best sex ever. So now the lifestyle experience forms. So for Becca, what is the most important thing every couple should know? A safe word. That when you drink alcohol and explore the lifestyle, you're bound to make mistakes that normally wouldn't happen if you were stone cold sober. So really be conscious about the amount you drink. I have learned that the hard way more times than I would like to admit. I think we've all been there. Mm -hmm. Some more than others. Me specifically. (laughs) What should a couple do if they don't agree on something? Depends on what that something is. If it is the attraction or want to play with a specific couple then it's best not to at all. If you want your marriage to last in the lifestyle, do not take one for the team, so to speak. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Damn, there's some good answers. (laughs) Damn, I'm good. (laughs) What was your biggest mistake? Crossing boundaries that shouldn't have been crossed. Also drinking too much in certain circumstances. I see a pattern. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) What's the best thing that happened to you in the lifestyle? Sexual freedom enhanced Mike and I's sex life. 
created a bond over an exploration, helped Mike come out of his introverted ways. Oh, mm -hmm. Mike. That's a little intro, book. <laughs> <laughs> My little intro. <laughs> uh, okay, so for Mike's lifestyle experience form, question, what is the most important thing every couple should know? That the lifestyle is fun. And if you're not having fun, then it's probably not for you. I, I agree like with that. that. What should a couple do if they don't agree on something? And they need to figure that out before any kind of play. I would agree. So true. What was your biggest mistake? We dated a girl for a few months, and at one point, I basically was not putting my partner before the GF. Oh, that sounds like a mistake. What's the best thing that happened to you in the lifestyle? The lifestyle has given me more self confidence. Oh, well, introvert Mike. <laughs> Anything else you would like us to know slash say, be real, be sexy, have fun. Don't force something that you're not into and never take one for the team. You guys both said don't take one for the team. Oh, Little yeah. heart sees. Y'all are so <laughs> cute. What's it like hearing what the other person put? I'm very proud of Mike's answers. Yeah, I knew she was going to write a whole book, so that's why... I I think I asked her, I'm like, so how long were your answers? She's like, I don't know. I was like, well, were they like one word answers? Like, yes, no. <laughs> like Zach yes. did. Yeah, that's what I did. But yeah. I thought yours were really. That's cool. I, I like your answers too. Mm -hmm. So any last words? Um. I've never met up with a couple twice and not played with them. So third time's a charm. <laughs> we, we play hard to get. <laughs> oh yeah. That's that an was? understatement. You motherfuckers. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, that's the question everyone wants to know is when are we hanging out again? Um, not sure. I'm sure we'll work it out. And we'll talk about it. Yeah. yeah. There'll be like some sort of event or something and we'll yeah. can, we can schedule something. You'll invite us something. We'll say, oh, sorry, we're busy. Wow. <laughs> Especially whenever Play you're... Hard, hard to get again. Hmm? Yeah, right. Well, thanks for having us on your guys' podcast. I have fallen in love with it over time. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we like to listen to it. We listen to it every week. And I'm not really like I I'm not really I don't listen to a lot of podcasts so mm. well thank you well thanks guys yeah. and thank you for coming on the show we definitely appreciate it a lot we appreciate your openness and honesty and vulnerability with us so thank you guys very very much yeah yeah you're welcome mm -hmm. any anywhere y'all want people to follow you on any social media or anything um, .com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually we do have a profile if you guys are interested at um sls and our name that you can find us is couples mt26 all together all right well if you're on sls you can find Mac mike and becca Send them dick pics, blow up their DMs. <laughs> Couples MT26. Yes. Yep. All right. Well, thank y'all. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Well, that was fun. Yeah. That was a good time. I'm glad we uh, brought them on. They had a lot of good answers to our questions. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So, we're not going to read any fresh forms because we already read theirs, so we'll save that for next week. And we also realize we don't really have a segment, as they call it, in the beginning of the show. We kind of just talk about whatever we feel like that week or shout things out that we like. So, I was thinking, maybe you guys want to know more about us, maybe not, but either way, we decided that 
we could have y'all ask us questions about us. So what we did was there's a link in the show notes to just a little Google form that just asks for your name and a question and what country or state you're from because that's always interesting. And you can submit that and we'll read it on the show. It can be something simple like, what's a good example? What's your favorite color? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of lame, but you get what we mean. It could be something crazy like, what cup size are you? Or how big is Zach's dick? Whoa. Are you sure you want to let them know that? The better question is, how small is Zach's dick? (laughs) Are we talking soft or hard? Because there's a big difference. Oh, there's a big difference. So yeah, that's in the description. Yeah, feel free to ask us anything you guys want, really. I mean, we're pretty much open books, so anything you want to know, we'll let you know. Yeah. So, lastly, before we let you guys go, we just want to say thank you so much to the people who have been emailing us or messaging us and letting us know how much they enjoy the show and how much they enjoy listening to it and how much they look forward to it every single week. It it really means a lot to us, and it really is, like, a good fuel to keep it burning, you know, so. Yeah, it always makes my day. We're very appreciative to all the fans we have out there. Yeah, so thank you guys very, very much. Well, I guess that's it. Zach, why don't you tell them everywhere that they can find us? You should know this by now. You can follow us on Twitter at Fresh Pineapples with a Z, not an ES. You can email us fresh-pineapples at gmail.com. <laughs> no, no. They can email us at thefreshpineapples at gmail.com. Thefreshpineapples at gmail.com. That's what I said. And they, Or they could go to our website, which is fresh-pineapples.com. Yes. And make sure, however you're listening to us, leave a review and a rating a rating give us any questions comments or concerns that you might have yes good job you almost got it yay all right well thanks for listening we'll see you guys next time bye thanks for listening to fresh pineapples now fuck off